In like manner, as Copernicus introduced the heliocentric model, we could see one more famous remedy in our colossal figuring out. A discussion in cosmology known as the crisis of cosmology has arisen. Neil deGrasse Tyson declares that the James Webb finding has settled this discussion with a material science-breaking picture. So, what is this emergency and how has the James Webb Space Telescope added to it? For those new, it's hard for old-timers to really take a look at it as a crisis. Anyway, we are in a circumstance where we didn't really know the age or size of the universe, as they are associated with a variable of two. Join us as we investigate the real edges of science where our data is continually addressed and unexpected exposures are made. The standard model of cosmology, a basic accomplishment all throughout the past 100 years, structures the universe's course of action of experiences and present status. Gravity, mediated by broad relativity, basically coordinates the universe's progression, figuring out its extension and the game plan of tremendous immense plans. Parts incorporate dark energy, dark matter, normal matter, neutrinos, and photons. The universe started from the hot colossal explosion around 13.8 billion years back, preceded by extension-causing density defects. However, this model, not persevering extensive observational help, is now under a magnifying glass. With the JWST, cosmologists have another apparatus that has been making issues in our norm model. In the early universe, before stars or then again frameworks arose, Neutral particles conform to 300,000 years post-Big Bang. Reionization happened 550 million years eventually at some point some other time when most of the universe became ionized. The JWST grants cosmologists to uncover more far-off universes than previously possible, offering new experiences into the early universe. The standard model, known as the Inflationary Hot Big Explosion or Lambda CDM, has figured out various components of the universe. Entirely clashing evidence has arisen, resulting in an emergency of cosmology. The crisis is critical. We don't exceptionally have any idea about the age of the universe, and unique strategies give different outcomes. One method used to quantify the universe's age is the huge microwave establishment. Researchers jump into the universe's development history utilizing numerical demonstrating based on Einstein's general relativity theory. This hypothesis produces the Friedman conditions, connecting the universe's design with its extension rate at explicit times. The enormous microwave establishment, remaining light from the early day of the universe, is a critical contraption in estimating its properties. Anyway, careful maps of the CMB, like those from the European Space Agency's Planck mission, need information on dark energy, a critical player in the continuous universe. Regardless of these difficulties, Researchers utilize the Friedman conditions to decide the development pace of the universe at some random time. They can decide the universe's development rate and thusly its ongoing age. Another strategy to quantify the universe's age is by exploring exploding stars. While the immense microwave establishment gives a definite record of the universe's creation, it's essentially a verifiable depiction starting billions of years prior. Seeing the universe's development directly is possible through anomalies like type IA supernovae, where a star dumps its air onto a nearby white dwarf, leading to a dazzling explosion. These supernovae act as dependable benchmarks, known as standard candles, allowing researchers to gauge the universe's development rate at the hour of their occasion. This technique, seriously utilized in the last part of the 1990s, assumed a huge part in finding dark energy, becoming a foundation in cosmological estimations. It's particularly useful for deciding the Hubble constant, a proportion of the universe's development rate since the Big Bang. However, recent observations have shown mistakes in the development rate, indicating potential obscure forces at play. NASA has noticed a beguiling perception, assuming that the universe's development eases back. It suggests a potential impact of obscure forces like dark matter. On the other hand, Assuming that the development rate speeds up, it could be attributed to dark energy. The Hubble Space Telescope and different instruments have measured evolving development rates across different observation focuses. Edwin Hubble, after whom the telescope is named, first proposed the expansion rate in 1929. At first deciphered as galaxies getting away from each other, it's now recognized as the universe's expansion. However, Accommodating estimations from different telescopes and techniques remain challenging. 
in spite of technological advancements, errors continue measuring the universe's age and development rate. While these progressions plan to respond to basic inquiries, they frequently raise more vulnerabilities. One proposed clarification for the errors involves likely imperfections in vast microwave establishment estimations or variations in dark energy after some time. One more chance is the intricacy of demonstrating supernovae accurately, leading to uncertainties in their use as cosmological instruments. The James Webb Space Telescope, while adding to our understanding, has also complicated cosmological issues further, suggesting the requirement for a reassessment of our current scientific understanding. The Flamingo Project, a critical drive within the Virgo Consortium, addresses a multidisciplinary effort involving astrophysicists, cosmologists, computational scientists, and data miners. This cooperative effort is focused on conducting extensive computer simulations that span the entire astronomical timetable, from the early moments of the universe's origin to the current day. These simulations are powered by sophisticated algorithms and mathematical techniques that embody our current understanding of fundamental physical processes governing the universe. By comparing these simulations against a wealth of observational data, scientists can validate their models and gain insights into the underlying mechanisms driving cosmic development. This ambitious project requires significant computational resources, and the Flamingo Project utilizes high-performance computing clusters and supercomputers to perform its simulations. These computational facilities enable scientists to simulate vast volumes of space at high resolution, allowing them to focus on the formation of galaxies, galaxy clusters, and large-scale cosmic structures with outstanding detail. Funding for the Flamingo Project comes from various sources, including grants from the European Research Council, national science and technology agencies, and scientific research institutions. This financial support enables the project team to access state-of-the-art computational infrastructure, highly skilled staff, and faster global collaboration essential for advancing cosmic understanding. Through the Flamingo Project and similar initiatives, by combining theoretical modeling with observational data, scientists aim to unravel the complexities of the universe's history and shed light on its fundamental properties. The Flamingo Project, a critical effort within the Virgo Consortium, epitomizes a collaborative effort among astrophysicists, cosmologists, computational scientists, and data analysts. This interdisciplinary approach is essential for tackling the complex challenges inherent in understanding the evolution of the universe. At its core, the Flamingo Project utilizes advanced computational techniques to simulate the entire cosmic timeline from the earliest moments after the Big Bang to the present day. These simulations, powered by cutting-edge algorithms, represent our current understanding of fundamental physical processes governing the universe. By comparing the simulated data with observational data, scientists can assess the accuracy of their models and gain insights into the underlying mechanisms driving cosmic evolution. The standard cosmological model recognizes any variations that might challenge our ongoing understanding of eternal motion. Professor Carlos Hest a critical collaborator in the Flamingo Research and Ogden Professor of Key Physical Science at Durham College, stresses the significant moment in cosmology that the project addresses. He noted that cosmology is at a convergence with new telescopes providing increasingly accurate data that may not perfectly align with our theoretical models. This inconsistency raises questions about the validity of our current models and the possible existence of biases. Coincidentally, we could unravel the universe. The Flamingo Project builds upon past generations that primarily focused on cold dark matter, but currently puts greater emphasis on incorporating ordinary matter, which contains only 16% of the universe, as well as neutrinos. Led by Professor Delightful Cupin from Robust School, researchers conducted extensive simulations using the Cosma 8 supercomputer, part of the Durham Hyperformance Computing Facility. These simulations spanned over two years and considered the impact of both dark matter and ordinary matter, with a specific focus on the CHAP. To achieve these simulations, researchers introduced a new code called QUIC, which enabled the spread of computational tasks across thousands of central processing units, sometimes reaching up to 65,000. Computer chips, this cutting-edge computational approach, considered a point-by-point -point assessment of the universe's movement giving insights into the role of standard matter in shaping boundless plans. 
In spite of the difficulties presented by errors between observational data and hypothetical models, the Flamingo Project addresses a deliberate effort to push the limits of how we could decipher the universe through thorough computational simulations, interdisciplinary collaboration, and a commitment to scientific inquiry. Experts plan to unravel the mysteries of perpetual development and gain further insights into the key nature of the universe. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity transformed our understanding of gravity by conceptualizing existence as a unified texture, which he named space-time. This imaginative framework described gravity not as a force acting at a distance but rather as the ebb and flow of space-time caused by the presence of mass and energy. One of the critical repercussions of general relativity is gravitational lensing, where the shape of space-time bends the path of light beams, leading to apparent distortions in the images of distant celestial objects. Gravitational lensing has become an essential tool in modern cosmology, allowing cosmologists to study the distribution of matter in the universe and test its fundamental structure. By analyzing the subtle distortions in the shapes and positions of galaxies, researchers can infer the distribution of dark matter, which outweighs visible matter significantly and exerts a gravitational influence on the light passing through it. Weak gravitational lensing surveys, in particular, have emerged as robust tests of cosmological models. These surveys involve a statistical analysis of thousands of galaxies to detect the subtle gravitational distortions caused by intervening matter along the line of sight. By measuring the statistical properties of these distortions, astronomers can constrain cosmological parameters like the amplitude of density fluctuations and the matter density of the universe. However, recent observations have revealed a perplexing discrepancy between measurements of the universe's homogeneity obtained from weak gravitational lensing surveys and those obtained from cosmic microwave background, CMB, experiments. The CMB, which is the residual radiation from the early universe, provides a snapshot of the universe's density fluctuations at a time when it was only 380,000 years old. Analysis of the CMB has yielded precise measurements of cosmological parameters, including the amplitude of density fluctuations, which are crucial for determining the large-scale structure of the universe. The discrepancy, known as the S8 tension, refers to the difference between the values of the S8 parameter obtained from weak gravitational lensing surveys and those inferred from CMB measurements. The S8 parameter measures the degree of matter clustering on large scales and is essential for testing cosmological models. The tension arises because weak gravitational lensing surveys suggest a lower value of S8 than that predicted by the standard cosmological model based on CMB data. Efforts to reconcile the S8 tension have led scientists to explore various hypotheses, ranging from possible systematic errors in the data to fundamental modifications of our understanding of gravity. Computer simulations, such as the Flamingo Project, have played a crucial role in this endeavor by providing insights into the complex interplay between dark matter, ordinary matter, and gravitational forces in shaping the cosmic web. Despite the challenges presented by the S8 tension, several measurements taken between low redshifts and the CMB remain consistent with the standard cosmological model. This has led to the intriguing possibility that the universe may have undergone a gradual evolution in its development testing our current understanding of cosmic structure and evolution. In summary, the S8 tension represents a significant challenge to how we could interpret cosmological structure and may require updates to existing theoretical frameworks. While it is unclear whether these discoveries will necessitate minor adjustments or a complete overhaul of the book on cosmology, they highlight the dynamic and evolving nature of scientific inquiry and the ongoing quest to unravel the secrets of the universe.